it, my specific area of expertise is child protection. So um, I, basically the legislation, there is two bits of legislation. There's a Children's Act, which we have to comply with, and that's our infrastructure. And there's 1989 and 2004. Now, in addition to that, more recently, the 2020 COVID um, guidance that the government released in relation to safeguarding children, the, the first draft did say that, um, that we must give priority to children that may be affected by COVID. So whether they've contracted it or are suspected of contracting it, that they could, they could be given assessments or tests. Initially, initially, it seems like without parental consent. So that's where I, I suppose people were getting the um, the thing from. Obviously, children being taken from school because the the caveat to that was that they could be um, I don't know self isolated or quarantined for four, up to fourteen days as a result of that. Now. Um, obviously, the children's commissioner, and she has a legal role and responsibility and power. So she can write to the government and say, basically, I won't bore you with the legalities of it, but say it's embedded in the 2004 Act. She can say, um, this is not right. Yeah, you are, invo you are invoking children's rights, parent rights, et etc. Et et you need to amend it. So they have amended it. And that and it's very clear and it's on their website and it's been distributed to all local authorities and child protection services which it clearly states you cannot assess or provide medical attention or what have you without a parent or a carer or somebody with legal responsibility for the child present and you have to also evidence that you have made thorough attempts to contact those individuals as well. So my advice to people, parents and school, when your child returns to school, you ensure number one, that all your contact details are up to date. So none of those kind of old phone or mobile numbers that you haven't got round to telling the school that you've changed and things like that. Make sure they're up to date. Make sure they're the people you actually want the school to contact. And that and also that you formally email the school in writing and say that you do not want your child yeah to have any medical intervention without your consent or your presence and that's it so that the school will know that if there are any issues they will contact you immediately because they're legally required to do so if you do not update your your details on the system and they have incorrect details and they cannot get hold of you then yes the government can step in yeah as a statutory issue and take charge and that's when you have difficulties